having that information is like the ultimate care and feeding manual for any type of relationship, because then you can, you can see where there are transits happening to your relationships chart. It's like, Hey, what's happening for us right now? (laughs) You know? And it's, it's so eye opening. This podcast episode is sponsored by Astrology Hubs Academy. Wherever you are on your astrology journey, we have a class that will help you get to the next level. Well, hello and welcome, everybody. My name is Amanda Poole Walsh. I'm the founder of Astrology Hub, and you have just joined a worldwide astrological conversation that we are having here every week. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know whenever we have a new video here to share. And if you're a returning Astrology Hub community member, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy you're here, especially today, because we are going to be talking everything, compatibility, and conflict resolution with the Astro Twins, Ophira and Tally A. Dude. And this is their Astrology Hub debut here on this podcast. And I am so grateful that they're here. I have been following the Astro Twins for years. And one of the things that I have noticed is that they are exceptionally good at taking the very complex subject of astrology and making it understandable, accessible, and fun. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about their journey today. We're also going to be talking about their latest book, Super Couples, which is a great example of what I was just saying, because they're taking the subject of composite charts and making it something that anybody can understand and apply in their lives. So I am so grateful that you're both here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So glad to be here and make our official debut. It's very exciting. Yes. So just a little bit about you two, just in case people don't know, they're the official astrologers for Elle Magazine, the matchmakers on Amazon Prime Videos, Cosmic Love. They've written the books Love, Zodiac, and Momstrology, and most recently, their book on composite charts, Super Couple. And I was telling them both before this episode, I wanted to actually have the book in front of me. So I went to my bookshelf to find it, and it wasn't there. I went, hmm, where'd it go? So I thought to look in one of my teenage daughter's rooms and I found it by her bed. And like I said, being able to make something like composite charts, something that a teenager is interested in is quite a feat. So amazing, you two. I I just- Awesome to know. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. All right. So how did you both come into astrology? Like, how did this happen? And did you do it at the same time? Or did one of you lead the way? How did, how did you do it? It's a little um, bit of a back and forth. Ophi, yeah, you're, you're the one who got us really deep into it. Why don't you tell? Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> unsigned astrology. We are the daughters of an immigrant dad. So, you know, we got the work ethic. He's a Sagittarius like us. And we were always working as kids. We had a paper route when we were 11. And we used to have to open the paper to the middle to put the little inserts in. And that's where the cartoons and the horoscopes were. So our first little glimpse of that was as young, you know, pre-teens. But when we got to college, um, pre-internet or just at the dawn of the internet uh, a couple years in, you know, we astrology started coming up in conversations and my boyfriend at the time a virgo gifted me when i was 20 or 21 my astrology chart from a new age bookstore we went to the university of michigan in ann arbor and i didn't even really know what that was um until i got it i was like oh because i would read about being a sagittarius it made sense to a point but then we discovered we had four planets in scorpio (laughs) <laughs> and I, know, like, I was like, give me that book. I need to read all about. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Mer- moon, Mercury, Mars and Venus and Scorpio. And we were always interested in esoteric things. Um, we went to space camp in fifth grade, not esoteric, more on the science side. But we I, we were in a gifted kids program and we were we were assigned a project to do something on enigmas and we chose witchcraft. I still have like, you know, this pyramid and all these spells we did in fifth grade. So the signs were kind of all there, but 
you know, so, and especially when we found out that we had moon, Mercury, Mars, and Venus and Scorpio, the stellium, which was not a word we knew at the time, but we were like, oh, that explains why we don't feel fully like Sages. And then started doing all of our friends, you know, looking all our friends up in a book. A weird thing happened though, when Ophi was working, she was working at the computer lab at the University of Michigan. And this guy, who wasn't a student, he was an older man, came in and he kept trying to print something and it was jammed up and he was like, oh, screw it. And he left. About an hour after he left, she called me. She was like, oh my God, I just, like the printer started spinning out. It was like this, I don't know, like a couple thousand. Birthday book. It was so it was like just from January 1st to December 31st, pages of celebrities and what their sign like their birthdays for every day of the year. Since we didn't have the internet yet to look up people's signs <laughs> and birthdays. Like, so we had this, you know, and then the guy ended up coming back and gave me a copy of the book. It was called the Celebrity Birthday Index. I still look for it sometimes. It was oh. on <laughs> In my own weird, I swear, I'm like, he was some kind of Pleiadian alien who came in. He had like this grayish toned skin and he was wearing a bad fitting suit. So, you know, we won't go down that conspiracy lane just yet, but that was a hard journey. <laughs> so, you know, well, I, I hear those stories a lot. It is kind of like some sort of Pleiadian force or like a mysterious force comes in and, and ensures that astrology, like, falls in the right people's laps. I mean, I've heard stories of, of people who were like sitting in a library and a book just fell off and landed on their head and it was an astrology book. It's like, oh, I guess I'll read this. <laughs> Sounds like a similar thing for you. Yeah. So you, you fell in love with it. You started reading your friend's charts and then it just kind of took off from there. Well, it was an interesting um, sort of correspondence with something else that was going on because while we were at Michigan, we started this multicultural women's magazine called Hughes. And we started it with a group of women. And one thing we would all kind of have this common bonding interest in was astrology. It's a universal language, you know? And so... You know, we talk about identity politics and articles about that. And then we go into moon signs. And um, so it kind of was the only way to talk about differences that wasn't polarizing. And I think astrology in some ways still is. It's like you have a sign. I've got a sign. Okay, cool. Yes, (laughs) Yes, I've definitely noticed that. And it's almost like this great unifier, even though we are talking about our differences. It just gives a language to talk about it where it's not as personal in a way, you know, like you are what you are and you can, you can find yourself in so many of the different signs, you know, depending on your chart. So yes. Okay. Earth is kind of messed up, but we all have a moon sign. We all have Saturn. We can find ourselves, our commonality on Jupiter or whatever. And it's, (laughs) yeah. So it was someone, you know, it all kind of, again, went from there. Someone who worked on the magazine, wound up working at teen people you know, and then was like, hey, they need an astrologer. And and at the time we were like steeped in like doing this, you know, intersectional feminist media, but we were also like, this is kind of too good to just pass up here. So let us look into this. And we wound up getting our first column for teen people because thanks to that celebrity birthday guide, we had become obsessed and you know, Mercury and Scorpio, you just download weird things. So we knew every celebrity's sign and we knew all the cover, you know, so it was just like, it just worked. And we really got our 10,000 hours in writing daily. We had to do his and her seven day a week daily horoscopes for their website. Wow. So I know, talk about like learning the, you know, just getting in the salt mines and learning how to write and, you know, bring in. So we found that we were able to kind of talk about the same things that we did with our magazine, but through the lens of astrology. And like Ophi said, it became almost easier to discuss some of the heavier topics that were happening at the time. I mean, you know, it was all, so it it just, it just became this like wide open pathway that pulled us in and here we are you know 20 plus years later wow would yeah. you i mean to people starting out do you recommend practicing with writing horoscopes i mean I, I again it's one of the things that 
a lot of the, who I would consider at this point, like master astrologers, they did have that period of time where they were writing either for a magazine or some sort of publication or even for themselves, a daily horoscope. It's definitely, um, I mean, it definitely helps you memorize what things mean and come up with creative interpretations and get past cliches because when you have to do it 12 ways over and over again and keep yourself entertained yeah. for my Capricorn rising in those moments we also have Saturn and Gemini so that makes us probably diligent writers but I think it does help for sure. Yeah. Some kind of discipline, whether it's that or just practicing doing chart readings every day or reading. I mean, right. yeah, for the us, practice. the practice makes perfect. People don't realize they're learning a whole new language and they expect themselves to be, you know, or to, to know more faster. Or they get impaired. I mean, I'm still learning things. There's stuff I don't know. I'm like, you know, Masters of what we've done, but there's always something new in astrology to learn and master. It, it's a lifelong study. I mean, I, and, but like you said, as you go along, you master certain things. And what one thing I see a lot with our community is they, you know, there's people that have been studying for decades, but still don't feel ready to call themselves an astrologer or, you know, charge for reading charts or whatever it is, because if you're, if you're looking at some of the ones that have been doing it for four decades or five decades, it's like, oh my, I will never be there. You know, it's a lot of responsibility to read a chart too. And I think, you know, we didn't do that. We were writing for 10 years before we took on reading clients, which was probably a little excessive, you know, I mean, it's not like we didn't look at stuff for our friends, but, you know, and I think people are learning faster at a more exponential rate thanks to technology. Like you can look stuff up and and people, I'm impressed with how Gen Z is just, they and the millennials too, but especially young, like probably your daughter too, like they catch on so fast with it. And it's amazing. I think though that there's still something to be said for life experience. Like you also have to be at like, gaining the confidence to do a reading also you know we did a lot of personal development work during that 10 years of prior so that also kind of you can't just know about the stars and the rules you have to have lived experience on planet earth too in order to do a good <laughs> reading or a good column so it's a myth you have to stay in the stars and on earth simultaneously it's a little bit of world walking there for sure Yes, that's what makes you so good at translating the language is it's clear that it's not you're not taking some sort of textbook ideas and just regurgitating them. It's it's actually filtered through life experience and the wisdom that comes from life experience. So and it's really clear. I mean, even your horoscopes are they're fun to read because they're, they're, so, they're juicy. You know, there's like there's some content in there that's not just like, you know, like I said, cookbook or textbook. So. Um, okay. Have you always worked together and like done everything together? I mean, you keep saying we, so I'm assuming that it's like kind of a ninety percent, I'd say, right, Ophi? Yeah, I mean, we've we have some of our own solo projects, or we've had times, but we just it just keeps on happening. I mean, I don't know. I, our brains are twinned. They they're complementary, like you know, just where we're different, like Tali likes to go a little more into the weeds of the art. And I like to go a little more into the weeds of the tech. So having an online business that is creative and that kind of thing, we both went to art school, but um, it kind of pairs well. So we haven't found a reason to stop yet. It's definitely working for you. My question is around the astrology of it though, because we get questions a lot when, especially when there's twins that aren't super similar to each other how how does astrology work in the in the case of twins and do you see that it it, it kind of proves astrology or that it leaves a big question mark about astrology when someone has the same birthday location and almost the same exact time I would say that, you know, your soul has had many lifetimes. So even if you come back as twins, you're still coming in from different past lives. And so 
you know, the karma that one twin is working through is different than the other. And probably you came in together as twins because you had some karma or a bigger spiritual mission maybe to fulfill. We have found that a lot of people who are astrologers are twins or a lot of twins are into astrology. But I think it's because you're born in a relationship already. So there's, you already speak the language of relationships and astrology really is a lot about that for people. Uh, but I mean, I know twins with different rising signs and couldn't be less similar. And then some who are super alike, I think it really does show up in the chart uh, and the houses. For us, we have nearly identical charts. Just our Capricorn rising is one degree off. So when Pluto went over Tali's ascendant, it was a year before mine. So I still had Pluto in my 12th house. She had it in the first. So that was wow. a time that we had very different experiences and I got to see what might be coming my way. But generally we're going through similar transits too. And um Yeah, so I had Pluto. I had Pluto cross my go back and forth, cross the ascendant three times. And she was like, bloop, all right, I'm done with that. So it was like <laughs> this tormented year for me. And she's like, what? Everything's great, you know. So I mean this is what where, you know, astrology is not deterministic, you know, and why we resonate so much with evolutionary astrology as as one of the paths. Um, Stephen Forrest is a friend of ours and we love his work. It's um it's just like, you know, we come in with this, you know, code, but we're all also going to be influenced by what's happening around us and twins can make different life choices. And sometimes twins will purposely, we had moments where we were like, it's annoying because you look at someone and they're making the same gestures that you are. And it's almost like, especially when you're a tweet, you're like, Oh, I don't want to see this mirror in front of me all the time. So you purposely rebel against that and try to be different so there's there's a little bit of twin uh psychology probably at play too <laughs> and there was the futility of it just surrender but um yeah. yeah i think for sure it's interesting <laughs> it's an interesting <laughs> i mean i have a 14 year old and 11 year old daughter and they don't even want to wear like even remotely the same thing even if it's in different colors or what you know they really want to be individuals mm -hmm. so i Imagine that in the teenage years, you might have that period of time where it's like, no, we're not the same. We're totally different. Even if deep down, you're kind of not. <laughs> I try to make, a, she made me pick out clothes for her. It was more I like. I still it. do. I hate shopping and she loves it. That's one way we're not twins. And we also have different Enneagrams. That's the only difference between us. That and like one bit of our human design chart. So that's helped us understand, you know things astrology doesn't interesting and how how many minutes apart are you Four, four minutes and it's made a difference on the enneagram a little bit of a difference on the human design and a difference on the degree of your ascendant yeah, yeah. it's real i'm nine degrees 37 capricorn and she's 10 37 but and so our you know mid heaven and i see and descendant are all just off by a degree so there's other you know those right. but uh, we also, she's a seven Enneagram and which is about the enthusiast and I'm a two, which is the nurturer. And then weirdly four minutes off, I'm outer vision and she's inner vision and I'm open taste and she's closed taste in our <laughs> profiles of human design, which is funny because I'm much more like visually out there looking, but Ophi comes up with all these like creative systems for like how to use astrology and you know so it, it, we're very lucky I guess we're twins who came together with some nice you know we work well together we have since our first elementary school business doing calligraphy on all the certificates for the school district and stuff so we I don't know we're we're, we're entrepreneurial charts and entrepreneurs since childhood. Scary, but true. <laughs> I love that. I'm the same way. I'm like oh, a cool. business, picking my neighbor's flowers, putting them in arrangements and selling them to them. Ooh, <laughs> Capricorn. I remember my mom was like, you can't do that. You can't sell them their own flowers. And I, it like didn't occur to me that that wasn't okay. <laughs> Why? I, 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 I made I it. You did, didn't you? <laughs> Okay. So, but what you're, what this shows is the importance of the accurate birth time. 
you know, I, I'm, I'm sure for some people that's kind of a, a disappointment because not everybody has access to that, but it's really amazing how just that four minutes makes such a big difference. As evolutionary astrologers, do you resonate more with the North Node being sort of the direction of the soul or with the rising sign? Because I know like esoteric astrology, the rising sign is super important in terms of soul direction, whereas in evolutionary astrology, it seems like it's leaning more towards that North Node. But what's your experience been? For I mean, me, we have, the same. There, we have those both in Capricorn, so I'd have to say, I don't know. I like, I go for the North Node myself. As do I. Yeah, I think the, I think the rising sign is definitely, you know, our worldly direction, like where we're focused here and where we want to move our bodies, where we want to put ourselves physically and mentally. But when it comes to that soul growth and evolution, I think the rising sign falls a little short. For me, I feel like the North Node really is that deep lesson where you may not conquer it in this lifetime, but you're going to definitely be pulled to work on it. But yeah, having it in the same sign has been interesting, both in Capricorn for us. So yeah. Right. And that resonates because my North Node is in Libra in the eighth house and my rising is Aquarius. And that, that definitely resonates because I'd say in terms of the world and you know creating community and using technology and astrology to create community, oh, that hello. really resonates. But where yeah. like the juicy challenges and all the like growth and learning, it's definitely in that relationship arena oh, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Speaking of relationships, what inspired you to write a book about composite charts? Like, why did you feel composite charts was something that needed to be shared with the world? You know, because it just isn't enough. It's such a great, I almost feel like it's sort of a best kept secret because we get so, I mean, it's so entertaining to start being like, oh, he's a Gemini or she's a Scorpio and I, and comparing and contrasting. Um, but the world is so divided now and people don't know that there's this middle way that they could take. Um, it's great to know about differences and understand them and they get you so far, but I think we need to work together too and just always know that we can find that common language. We just... Yeah, just I think it's, yeah, it's really like there's the 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 higher octave of us of what happens when you come together into this third entity when your charts blend into a composite, it takes it out of the realm of I want this, you want that. It's more like what's best for us. And you know, having had many relationships with our Scorpio moons and having always been in a relationship as twins, it's always been like one of the primary topics that people come to us to talk about, whether it's a business relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship, or even just, I mean, I've never done an astrology reading where we didn't talk about at least one other seminal person. And so, um, but yeah, with all, like Ophi said, with all the just, you know, division in the world, like we needed a new conflict resolution tool and composite charts are one of the best ones that we personally know. Yeah. They're so surprising. It's like, you know, like, Oh, okay. I'm a Sag. They're a, a Taurus and we're a Pisces together. Whoa. That's wild. You know, <laughs> what do I do with that information? Like, Oh, and then you start to see like, uh, that's why this thing that never makes any sense when I read about their sign or my sign is such a prevalent theme. So it's very helpful to know. Let's back up just a little bit because I'm I'm making the assumption that our audience knows what composite charts are and how they might be different from synastry or other types of relationship astrology, you know, other ways to assess relationships. So can one of you explain what a composite chart is and how it's different from like a synastry reading or something? Sure. A composite chart is a blended chart. So in a synastry chart, you compare it's a side by side or inner wheel outer wheel comparison you, you know whereas the way that a composite chart either you do a midpoint or a davidson but we we, did, we wrote about the midpoint method um it it takes a midpoint of your sun and their sun your moon and their moon your venus and their venus if your charts were to 
meet exactly in the middle. Every point, this you'd have this third entity. If your chart said a baby, it would be the composite chart, essentially, that had exactly half of your genes and half of theirs. And so you have this this third you, there's your relationship is actually its own unique entity that you can see through the composite chart. And it's like having that information is like the ultimate care and feeding manual for any type of relationship, because then you can, you can see where there are transits happening to your relationships chart. It's like, Hey, what's happening for us right now? <laughs> you know, and it's, it's so eye opening. I love it. I mean, when I did mine with my boyfriend, uh, we have like five planets in Pisces, which is funny because we're, we're Capricorn and a Taurus. So to have like all this Piscean energy is really fascinating. And it resonated so deeply. It was like, yes, yeah, we do meet in that spiritual place. We do like, it really is. It felt really, really accurate. How do you I mean, do you find that most people resonate with the composite chart or yeah. it's a harder one to really like, quote unquote, prove, you know, because it's like this, it's this third entity that doesn't necessarily exist, but, but there is, um, but it, it, it is something that lives, right? Yeah. I guess you can like, I mean, you could do a transit chart to your composite chart and I have, but it's also, um, it's it's yeah like you said it's a lived experience the the lived experience is what proves or disproves depending on what you you know what you see but i've i love that because you know if you read about a capricorn and a taurus they're both earth signs so it's like they're counting their money and sitting there like planning for old age and retirement like and no you become a composite pisces you're like probably looking at astrology charts or doing a sound bath or <laughs> going to a spa somewhere, you know, tropical or something together because the yeah. water of the Pisces. Well, you do live on an island, so perfect place for a Pisces oh, yeah. relationship. Oh, <laughs> we're we're surrounded by water. We're, we're doing the I Ching. We're, yes, absolutely. Oh, like, astrology is what brought us together. Oh, okay. wow. Perfect. Wow. So yeah. Fun. And yeah, is he into it enough. now? You actually convinced a Taurus. Well, a Taurus man will either be all in or all out, you know? He's totally all in. He actually, from he used to model. And when he did, he would check the farmer's almanac for the day to get his hair cut because he already was clued into that there was something to it. So he didn't, he didn't know much about it, but he already, he's very uh, mathematical. And so it makes sense to him from a mathematical perspective. Yeah. And yeah. he's all you no, know, he's very, very expansive in his viewpoint. So it just made sense to him that it, there's something there. Yeah. yeah of course, it would come through farming for a Taurus, right? <laughs> One of our best friends is a April Taurus, and he's a master mathematician, astrologer. So yeah, but yeah. then we know other Tauruses who are like, no, you know. <laughs> so. Definitely open-minded about it, for sure. Yeah. Well, so in terms of relationships and astrology do you do you feel like astrology can predict the outcome of a relationship or is it more like what you're saying you learn what the two souls have come together to experience and then you have a choice like how you want to engage with that combination our opinion or well i shouldn't say our opinion my opinion um is that astrology does not need to be that deterministic. It can predict the challenges, it can predict the strengths and the weaknesses, but the outcome is where your free will comes in. You can choose to work on a relationship as long as you want. You know, you may not have a willing partner. They may not be, you know, the composite chart and the sinistry charts are there for you as guideposts and instruction manuals and roadmaps. And you can try to use them to the best of your ability. However, if you have a partner that's not willing to do any of the work whatsoever, whether it's from astrology or their own personal responsibility, then you have to ask yourself what you're getting out of it. But it's always a choice. You can even stay even if you're getting nothing out of it because you're always getting something out of it. Even if it's a rerun of your childhood or past life issues, <laughs> maybe yeah. you need to go through it again. I don't know. In terms of of the the challenge, the more challenging relationships that people may encounter, do you have any tips for 
how to navigate those sometimes seemingly huge chasms where it's hard to meet. And that that's exactly where the composite chart comes in. Um, especially, you know, it's communication tends to be the first breakdown of things a lot, you know, for many people. It's like they are different. We're all different, but we don't know how to get it across to each other. So looking at your composite Mercury sign can show you how to set the stage for those like the dialogues or to get to a place of understanding. I was in a relationship with someone and we had a composite Capricorn. And so a lot of times there were these big future plans that we couldn't align on. And then it was like, let's go for a hike, you know, and it all seemed to work itself out. Or if we would hang out um, in a place that was kind of family oriented, even like a restaurant that was family owned and run, it would be like, okay, sit down, have that meal and talk about it. So like that can help you with setting the stage for, and, and needing to like, you know, you can also look at where your composite Saturn is to show where maybe you need to have better boundaries in the relationship and that you shouldn't try to compromise on everything there, but give each other a bit more space and autonomy or, you know, just have your own domains to lord over. There's so, you know, so I think it's, there's, it's all couples therapy when it comes down to it. <laughs> After a while, every relationship is going to, I guess as twins, we had no, we could never get away from each other. So we became experts in negotiating, like who got the better toy when people gave us a shared present or who got to wear what first when we got the Yeah, our, the reason and, we had a paper route and discovered astrology is because our parents were, uh, they got married very young as students, pregnant with twins. Our dad was an immigrant and learned English from Sesame Street when he came over here before we were born. So you know, they didn't have extra money for us to buy the clothes we felt we needed to have to fit in. So we got a paper route and would buy one of the items and then share it. <laughs> like we had a pair of guest overalls. This was the 80s. I remember that was the big purchase. So we even had to negotiate that. Even our paper route, I had one side of the street and Tolly had the other. So, but Funny enough, our very first composite chart reading and even chart reading was for Beyonce in 2003 in person. <laughs> we we ended up at the Billboard Music Awards um, backstage in the celebrity swag room. So this bizarre opportunity came through for us to do that. And we quickly got a PC and the solar fire software and, and it did composite charts. So, you know, she was one of the celebrities that came around. Um, she was not as big as she is today, of course, but um, so Tali offered her a composite chart because and then like we sat she actually waited for us to print out the 60 page document <laughs> backstage at the MGM Grand Casino um, and, and stayed up late reading it she told us the next day. That was her with Jay-Z or was yeah, that? Yeah she was yeah it was right it was in the beginning when they were you know doing their crazy in love thing and but it was yet it was still like rumored only and I was like hey do you want uh you know we happened to know he was December 4th because he's two days after us a couple years older but it was just like yeah we and she's a Scorpio moon too so we got to chat with her about that it was it was one of those magical we, we also got to talk to Stevie Wonder and Sting that day about their charts and Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie it was like the one of those bizarre days like the guy who came in it it was yeah, the celebrity birthday book guy it was like, what? Yeah, another, another planet right now? Like, <laughs> but, real, but seeing how like Beyonce was like so like I saw her the next day because we were there for like three days or something. She was running on stage, and I was going to the bathroom and ran into her backstage, and um, she stopped and said that she had stayed up really late to read the composite chart booklet. And it was so interesting. So I was like, from that moment um, on, I knew that 
Okay, that really like made a powerful difference for her because she was nervous. I think you could tell, like they were very from very different upbringings. She was very middle class, and you know he was a little rough around the edges there. And I think it gave her some reassurance about um, about who they could be together. Well, I'm sure it did since they have like five composite planets in Libra and Scorpio. Like they're almost their entire chart is Libra and Scorpio. They're a composite yeah. chart, and that's actually the same. For Will and Jada, uh, Pinkett Smith, like they're like we we like to look at celebrities for examples because you can you know we watch them play out in real life. I mean, you can see it with Harry and Meghan and Will and Kate, like how Will and Kate become an Aries and Harry and Meghan become a Virgo, and there's this sort of competitive, not sort of incredibly <laughs> competitive energy there. So, yeah. <laughs> Do you have the perspective that in relationships we're working out patterns or, or we're working out like maybe karmic themes and that even if we change partners, we're probably going to be still working on the same issues? Or do you think that changing partners can sometimes completely change the script and now we're, we're not working with the same things? It's a bit of both, in my opinion. I mean, we're going to be who we are. The issues, you know, our natal chart has that encoded, you know, I think the North and South node very much. So we'll show those things we're going to keep dragging around and working out for our whole lives. But the the energy can completely change and, and different parts of you can get activated and show up because of the space that your composite chart is with different people like if you're with someone who's in a you become a primarily air chart versus someone who you become very heavy on water the you're going to connect in such a different way and that's going to allow you to either maybe intellectualize or really do that deep inner healing with that person okay another question because when you were talking about beyonce it reminded me of what i've noticed recently we just recently launched our reading platform where people can come and connect with different astrologers to have readings based on the kind of question they have. Awesome. And one of the things that I've noticed in talking about this is there's a lot of people who get nervous about having a re astrology reading. It's like, oh, oh, God, no. yeah. are you going to show me something I don't want to see? Are you going to tell me something I don't want to know? Have you experienced that? And why do you think that is? Oh, always. I mean, because you're because they can, you know, because our minds are subject are subjective and we're like, oh, what if they know something I don't and tell me something bad? And then you start to have that confirmation bias. So, I, I mean, I had a tarot reading. I didn't know anything about tarot. Um, and, the, and back in 2001, and the tarot reader told me that the guy I was dating that trying to get um, affection out of him was like trying to get blood out of a stone which was kind of true and then he literally without even knowing i'd had the reading broke up with me the next day so i was like oh my and she had pulled the devil card and all these and i was like oh my god i need to so i felt really vulnerable and like i didn't i was like did she jinx me or is this like why is this all happening at the same time and so then i went and learned tarot just so that would never happen to me again all those scorpio planets needed control back but that's why i think people are nervous because you may see something that they don't and yeah that, or may you know that one of my favorite quotes is that advice is what we ask for when we already know the answer but wish we didn't and i think that that is probably what's happening <laughs> for people who say that do you find that a lot or do you find more often people are sort of like positively assured about? Well, they end up positively assured, but I have to sometimes reassure them like, listen, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your relationship. I'm not going to tell you when you, you're going to die. I don't even look for that. I won't look for that. Right. I will tell you if you need to be careful. I'll tell you if there's like an issue that might not you know, be so easy to work with. But it's not my job to tell you that that's not part of your karmic path. You know, okay, so you're dating someone that's challenging. But I don't think you should break up with them. Stick around and learn something about yourself. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. 
How did you come up with the name super couple? Like what, what inspired that? I, I love it, by the way. I think it's yeah. awesome. That was Ophi's work. Yeah. <laughs> our, uh, our Taurus friend, Matthew, who Tali mentioned, who's our, uh, you know, like our Oracle buddy, I guess, of more than 20 years, fellow astrologer, um, often, you know, we, uh, we get into sort of a, the zone with him a lot and brainstorm uh, ways to bring astrology kind of into the, the, to make it accessible for anyone. So we were really looking for like, what is the thing that, what is it, this, what is this heightened state, this ultimate place? Like, why would you do a composite chart? Because the problem with astrology sometimes is that like, it has so much of its own language. It's really hard to bridge. You're either like new and curious or obsessed. And then there's this whole middle ground that people tend to skip over very quickly. But a lot of people are in that. They're like, they just know their sign, but they're like, whoa, I want to know this, but I'm now immediately overwhelmed by all the jargon. So we thought, what is this ultimate state that occurs when two people blend their energy? We went on all the thesaurus sites and everything and and super couple came up and uh, like, that's it. So yeah. It's a little hyper hyperbole, but why not? You know, we need that. Jupiter's and Aries. <laughs> you know, you just described me perfectly. When I after I had my first reading, I was like, whoa, this there's something to this. Before then, I had no interest in astrology. I totally wrote it off as kind of dumb. I was like, so everybody in January is exactly the same. Like that makes no sense. Right. You know? right. Um, but then I had my first reading and I was like, whoa, there's definitely something here. And I went to learn more and it was either so watered down that it wasn't useful or it was so complex that I was like, what is, what are they even talking about? I mean, it's definitely one of the reasons why I started astrology have because of those people in the middle, like you're awesome. talking about. And thank you for doing that. Yeah. It's thank really you. Really needed. Yes. yes, it is. And there's, there are a lot of people who are interested, yeah. you know, curious, but they can't speak they can't speak that the, it is a very complex language and, and people get so, so yeah it is your You're gemini a, moon and translating it and i feel like capricorns are really great at creating systems and simplifying without watering down so right yeah what were you going to say oh i was going to say that um what was i going to say well that that astro oh yeah Sometimes people are like, oh, sun sign astrology, which, you know, we, that is so, you know, that, that sun sign astrology is a gateway to the deeper levels of astrology. People can't take in, you know, there are some people out there, but to just, you know, write off sun sign astrology or even just expect, you know, people to have to know their rising sign, like you're leaving out people who, just didn't have the privilege of having someone write down their birth time. Maybe they were adopted. You know, there's so many people in the world who, you know, ultimately astrology, it is a divination and mystical system, but it's also archetypal. It's something to learn about and chew on and play with. And is this me? Is this not me? And, you know, that's what I love about being in the middle there is like, opening up a conversation for people, not telling them you are this, but Hey, you might be, this is, have you thought about this? Guess what? That thing you do corresponds with this. And then from there they can go, you know, in whatever direction or just learn on, only about their sun sign. It's, it's a tool. It's not meant to be this weird competitive thing that's happened in recent years in astrology. It's, so bizarre. <laughs> Tell me more about that because I was just going to ask you what you, where you see astrology going, and you've been in this world for a while. So what have you? How have you seen it change, and where do you see it going? Yeah, there's a little bit of cosmic cockfight going on, as I call it. <laughs> I don't know if you have to bleep that out, but um, yeah, there's there's a myth. Like I love that astrology is so accessible in some ways for people, like. You know, it's on Snapchat now. And but at the same time, a little bit of knowledge can be a dangerous thing. I think people are very quick to, you know, write someone off because CoStar said their Mars signs were at a bad emoji, you know. And so it's like 
we we got to do better than that people you know we can't just write someone you know like is that good is that bad like there's a you know i love the memes for the hilarity of them but then there's also a point where it's like it's just become there's a lot of backbiting mean girl energy in astrology now that is and also a lot of people that take themselves too seriously because it's like it's an unlight i mean you it's you can be li licensed and certified yes but that's not required to have a practice so anyone can call themselves an astrologer you can't do that as a doctor or a psychiatrist or anything like that so it's a wide range of people and experience and it's also very hard you know like so it's it's an open field for anyone to come aboard and have the same title as everybody else like a 20 year old and a 70 year old could both have the same title of astrologer and and offer chart readings for people. and we've gotten great readings from people of both yeah ages. so you know we so, yeah so there's like and 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 you know i think it's also supply well there seems to be quite a demand for the supply too as you know with the hub but um i just i don't know i think it's like everything in the world has become a bit divided like okay you do whole signs great I, someone else does tropical great it's like this weird i don't know maybe people are just bored <laughs> <laughs> i mean it seems like it's just human behavior that you see in any other field just showing up in astrology and now that it's reaching more people i mean what do you feel is the most important thing to do as astrologers who love astrology who want to proliferate um good astrology or at least useful astrology what do you think is the most focus important on the person you're serving and not comparing yourself to others recognize that there's someone who's a vibrational match for your healing powers if you're in the right headspace and focused on helping others and providing and serving then those people will show up that need what you're offering and if they're not you know and also learn business and marketing too like we all have to learn that nowadays it doesn't mean you have to be on every social media platform but you you know we teach other astrologers and healers what we've learned in our 25 plus years of business. We have a program called Launchpad uh, where we actually share how to set up your business. And we've created a whole system using astrology for that because so cool. you know, people aren't born knowing the language of entrepreneurship and business ownership anymore. We've made we've done all the trial and error in the same way that we've done daily horoscopes. So, you know, we've put in the, the hours to build a business and we love to share that with, with others who want to do the same. That sounds so amazing. And I can see that there would be tons of people in our audience that would really benefit from your Launchpad offering. How do they join? So we open up periodically. We are starting our next quarter group uh, mid-April and yeah it's gonna join you're gonna get a special onboarding so you can feel like you're fully immersed and then you're gonna bring a project or your business or your practice and really learn a deep dive using your birth chart and a special system that we created called I am uh, that combines 13 parts of your chart into three archetypes to make it simple so that you can really use your chart as a tool and learn learn how to do business in the way that works for you. Because it's not just what you do, it's also how you do it. If you don't enjoy working on your business, then it doesn't even matter if you're doing what you love. It can become as bad as a nine to five job. So we've experienced that too, where we've been like, wait a minute, our passion has become a prison. So yeah. we, you know, we've used what we've learned to empower other people to to create and grow. And the, yeah, the way each quarter works is we start, you know, the first month is actually working with the transits to finesse the plan of whatever it is you're working on. So you're going to bring that and we're going to be like, okay, here's the new moons, the full moons, the retrogrades, here's the transits, here's, you know, and there's a lot of big things happening this year for sure. Um, and then we go into a specific area. We just did space clearing, set, you know, the time zone that you should be in. Um, I mean, like, not, you know, are you a future, present, or past focused person? How to actually set up your space according to that. 
And then the third month, we do astro audits where we actually, you know, look at different like a hot seat. Yeah, we do like take someone's chart and analyze it. We call it the dolphin tank because it's a friendly shark tank and help you with your branding, your social media, your presence, your offerings, your messaging, your content, because you can't do all the things. And each of our archetypes has a different set, a different path for them. Maybe they should go teach a course and a masterclass. Maybe some should be speaking on panels. Others should be innovating and writing. So we're going to help you not only find that, but use your chart to focus and prioritize and put your energy into the right things. So we're going to put the link for that in the description of this episode. But you are speaking to my Capricorn put what? Like that, oh. but Capricorn, uh, Sun, Venus, and Mercury are all oh, like that. Oh. I mean, but this is amazing because you're combining astrology and and the fact that we are unique in the way that we do things and 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 in the way that we'll be fulfilled in doing things. With it sounds like some really sound also business uh, strategy and approaches so that people can experience success in the way that works for them. Wow. That- We've done, I mean, we've built our own website. We've worked with web developers. We've designed numerous like courses, a master class, short term courses. We've podcasted. We've been on, we've developed a TV show. So, you know, most of our people are going to have access to our coaching throughout the whole thing too. So that's one of the, the, you know, Q and A and the hot seats and the chance to just ask us anything. We have a, a Facebook group along with it. So, you know, if, if we don't know what it is that people need, we there's someone in the group who will have that. And, you know, so we can always point people in the right direction if we don't have an answer for them on the fly. So, yeah. Uh, amazing. And what are the odds of people getting their, like, questions answered? I mean, is when they're in... Well, the- we stay on. We have the little afterglow uh, Zoom room. Yeah. That- Buddy, like we try to answer as many people's questions as we can because they're, you know, that's what they're there for. You don't, how often do you get to ask someone, how did you do it? Like that sounds, you know, oh, great, you did a sharper Beyonce, but it's like, how did you end up getting back? St-? You know, so like, because it's just, that's what I always want to ask people. So yeah. begin to ask us that or each other, partner up. We were, we were made in Israel, but born in Michigan. So for us, like, Being, you know, it's like being personable and connected to people is like how we were raised. And it's a big, so people are always kind of surprised, like, oh, you remember my name? It's like, of course we do, you know? So it's a very, um, even though there's, it's not a small community, it's intimate. The vibe is intimate and people feel known and seen because they are. That's important to us. We, we've had people come back year after year to be part of our program and you know we've watched their businesses grow and change and shape their companies uh gotten sponsorships that kind of, we're really committed to people getting real world results on this planet out of what we learn not just navel gazing you know with their star gazing just you know it's can't record us we're like, well, I <laughs> make something happen for you here <laughs> Exactly. I feel the same way. Are, and, and is it for anybody who wants to start any kind of business or is it mainly yeah. for yeah. people who want to start an astrology business? Any kind of business. But we do end up getting a lot of astrologers and healers in there, too. So, But yeah. we've had like a, a whole really cool range. We say soul-centered entrepreneurs is generally who we attract. Or you could have a project. Not everybody, you know, we have people yeah. in there who have nine to five jobs, but they're working on a band or working on, you know, a podcast or something, and they want to just use it to develop that. So you don't have to be an entrepreneur necessarily. You just have something you want to launch into the world. Um, you're not sure. Yeah. So curious. I want to know my archetype. What's my archetype? Okay. Right. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? They can already... You can already go to astrostyle.com slash I am, I A M. There's a calculator and a quiz, and you'll find yours in a little, little downloadable PDF. So I, don't love it. I want to know your archetype now, too. So, <laughs> okay. Well, so if you are interested in joining the launch pad that they're going to be doing here in just a few weeks, make sure you click on the link in the description of this video. And you guys, you're awesome. I love that you're doing this. It's so great. 
<laughs> Thank you. We One of just favorite things to do. It's like just what we live for. So yeah. That's brilliant. I'm sure there's people in our audience um, going to check that out right now. And it's yeah. really needed. I mean, like you, like you said, you, you can be, it's actually one of the reasons why Astrology Hub is successful too, is because we actually do a lot of that for the astrologers oh, who maybe cool. have dedicated their entire life to being the best astrologers, but they're not interested or equipped to do the marketing and the tech and the websites and the social, you know, all that. So I can see both, both things, like definitely giving astrologers and budding astrologers the tools to create their own businesses. And then for that, for the ones that are just never going to do it, because there's definitely some ones that are just, they're never going to do it. They don't, they don't have the interest. They don't have the time. They're not going to do that. But I love that you're offering that. That's really cool. Aww. Thank you. This is my 16 year old dachshund who's also a Sagittarius with a Scorpio moon. Same, same as me. So, oh, sweet. Hanging Hello. out. Yeah, Lulu. Hello. Hey, that's awesome that you do that. And it's true. Even if you are into it, um, it's still a lot. And that's amazing that you offer that so that people can really, there are people, like you said, that just want to focus on doing the work as astrologers. Right. But they know they yeah. need that to sustain their business and income. It's like anything to not have to go work for the man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, you guys are amazing at what you do. I have one final question. What would you, what, what do you hope that people walk away with from your book? Like, what do you hope they, that, yeah, like how, how they feel at the end of reading your book? I would say just like the way I feel about astrology in general is that it's a point that's, it's a conversation starter. It's a thought starter. It's a place to begin exploring. It's that it opens up a new plane of possibilities and inquiries and curiosity for people about why someone is in their life, what they can learn about themselves from the relationship, you know, and to stop to not, you know, we spend some, oh, I shouldn't have done that. That was a mistake. That person was wrong for me. I don't think anyone comes into our life without some sort of reason, even if it's a lesson or a pivot point. So I hope that Super couple helps everybody who reads it understand why they've had the relationships they've had, be they platonic or romantic, and to maybe find forgiveness for themselves for the ones that didn't work out and find some new juicy excitement for the ones that are still going. So good. Thank you so much for coming and sharing. I just cannot recommend your book anymore to people. It's so good. And it just, it's, it's fun. And I think it'll give you a lot of amazing insights. And so I just want to thank both of you for being here and um, for just spending your time and giving us me the opportunity to introduce you to our audience, which I'm sure there's many people who've heard of you, but maybe not a lot of people have had the chance to really get to know you, which has been such a pleasure. So thank you. We're really excited. To, yeah. Hello, Astrology Hub audience. And we're so yeah. happy to connect to you now. So yeah. Yeah. Thank All you. Right. And any, anyone who is catching this episode and wants to stay in touch with us at Astrology Hub, I highly encourage you to check out our Cosmic Insider. It's free. It gives you a synopsis of all the episodes that we do every week. You can get that at astrologyhub.com slash insider. And I hope that we get to stay in touch, Tally and Oprah. We, we must. <laughs> we must. And next time you come to Hawaii, right? No. Right this never. summer, in fact. I'm trying to get Ophi to come with me. So, yes, we'll be hanging out now for sure. <laughs> right, well, I hope to see you both then. And thanks again for your time. And we will look forward to connecting with you again soon. Take care. Yay. Did you know there's a whole universe that you can unlock with so-called minor aspects? Most astrologers don't even use them, but master astrologer Rick Levine calls them harmonic aspects, saying they're key to revealing the deeper metaphysical dimension of a birth chart, including the creative, mystical, and unseen parts of ourselves and others. And if you want a taste of how powerful they can be, just listen to what he has to say about some of the subtitles in play during his February and March forecast. There's one one other thing that happens in February, by the 12th, Venus makes a septile. That's one seventh of a circle to Pluto. Venus makes a septile to Uranus. Boom, boom. What are septiles? They're otherworldly. They're supernatural. Dane Rudyard said they were fated. 
things come out and things come through that were somehow in other realms. And like Uranus, it's like lightning striking. And I think the combination of Mercury going into Uranus's modern sign of Aquarius and all these subtitles will awaken us to the idea that we don't see everything that we think we do. Of course, it's not lost on me that this is the first week of Foundations Level 3 course, and it's just such an overwhelming septile message that we get from the universe. I really think that there's going to be a bit of a wake up in mid-February. If you're ready to uncover these powerful unseen aspects in your chart, join us for Astrology Foundations Level 3 with Master Astrologer Rick Levine at astrologyhub.com slash foundations3.